everyone. I'm coming at you guys today with my review of the Basketball Trolls. Um, within this episode, there were like 14 scenes, excluding the repetitive scenes that were played after com commercial breaks. But eight of those 14 scenes, Jackie was just basically talking to everyone except for Laura over and over again regarding the things that Laura allegedly said about her behind her back. Now, the first scene within this episode was just basically a continuation of last week's episode during um, Laura's event at the boutique regarding this youth center opening. And uh, Jackie was talking to Malaysia, of course, about Laura. Now, Jackie is obviously cut from a different cloth. Um, obviously, she's a few eggs shy of a dozen. Obviously, her elevator stopped somewhere. Now, I have to say that I was inspired by the social worker Imani because I did my own assessment regarding Jackie's behavior. If I was Jackie's doctor, I would prescribe her with Xanax and Prozac. Prozac is typically given to a patient that suffers from obsessive compulsive disorders, which is something that I believe that Jackie suffers from because she's talking about Laura over and over again. No matter who she's with and where she is, regardless if it's shopping, taking photos for her so-called clothing line, she has to stop. And she's talking about Laura. So it's really interfering with her day-to-day -day normal activities. And Xanax is typically given to a patient to de decrease the abnormal excitement within the brain. Which is another thing that I believe that Jackie suffers from. Because she seems hyper when she talks about um, uh, Laura. And um, so within this episode, Jackie went shopping with Drea for some fabrics because Dre is about to start her own bikini line. And of course, Jackie was talking about Laura and she revealed to Dre that Laura was saying things like, you know, she can't dress, which, you know, there is no argument needed with the, regarding that statement because we've all seen Jackie's taste in fashion in previous episodes. But within this episode, she had on this beaded top. She had this sheer black bikini wrap tied around her waist. I don't know if she had on any leggings, shorts, or a bikini, or a skirt under the wrap. But she had the wrap layered with a studded chastity belt or a studded fanny pack. I don't know what you know what, what it was. But she had these shades on. She had her hair in a high ponytail. Was wrapped up in like in a little bun. It looked like a nappy bird's nest. And within this episode. She was also seen wearing long earring. Well one long earring. And um, she also went to Malaysia's jewelry line event. Wearing some cut off shorts. It was obvious that she did not have any panties on because she had a visible wedgie. She also had on this black one shoulder top and she had on this sequence handbag. She did not have that ponytail which she is known for but she did have that stiff straight yakky look going on. Now she also revealed to Dre that Laura allegedly said that her hair is always tacky. Again, there is no argument needed regarding that statement because it is tacky. 90% of the time that we see Jackie, she's wearing her hair slick back molded in a low ponytail in the back. And you know her hair is kind of thin on the sides and it look like bicycle tracks as a matter of fact it looks like a pac-man maze on the side of her head and like i said in previous reviews she's always wearing that zuri drawstring straight synthetic mangy mildewed molded wet oily nappy ponytail attached and um so if she's not wearing that then she's wearing a cap with her hair wrapped up in a little bun looking all nappy looking or she'll have that straight stiff yakky look going on now we do need to draw some attention on that next situation she have because i really paid attention to it um during this episode um her neck she does have that florida evans neck her neck looked like four goodyear tires stacked on top of each other so jackie really has some issues going on now i hope that she do go to like cedar sinai's um mental health institution and consult with a psychiatric doctor and maybe get herself committed and she needs to be in one of those padded rooms of course without that 
that uh, ponytail because it may be a biohazard to other patients, to doctors, as well as nurses treating her within the facility. But like I said, she really needs some help. She's certified crazy. Now, I don't know if you guys paid attention, but within this episode, um, she was sitting with Drea eating ice cream and um, there was this music being played throughout that entire scene as well as the commentary for that scene that Jackie was doing. And it just sounds like some Lifetime Movie Network suspense inspired instrumental. So I don't know if VH1 was, you know, implying that Jackie is certified crazy because, I mean, she really needs to be locked up in some padded room. Now, also within this episode, she wanted Drea to model some things that she supposedly designed. Now, the things that she brought to this empty photography studio were things that weren't really original, but I did like one of the dresses that Dre had on. It was the one with the um long V-neck in the front. It was a long dress. I like that dress. But, you know, knowing how Jackie mine, you know, is acting lately, you know, maybe it's some things that she purchased from Rave, Rainbow, Wet Seal, the 579 shop or whatever. And she's just obsessed with Drea because she was talking about how Drea legs look. She was taking pictures. I did not hear a shutter sound. I did not see a flash or anything like that. There were not any other photographers in the room. I don't believe I saw any other people in the room as well. So it just seemed like a Lifetime Movie Network obsessed type movie going on and it also kind of seemed like a young girl answering to a craigslist ad to someone that's just a maniac someone that's just some kind of crazed freak so jackie again she is crazy now laura within this episode laura revealed that she was moving back to orlando to find a spot for her kids so that the kids could be closer to their father and I just recently read this interview that she did, and I posted the link down below in the description box in case you guys want to look at it yourselves. But um, she admitted in this you know, interview that the kids played a big part of them getting back together. And I just believe that, you know, if she's getting, well, if she's engaged, you know, because of the kids, that is like a sad excuse for someone to get married with someone because he could be a father to his kids without being married to her. But I just think that's just part of the reason why they're engaged. Now, I don't know if you guys saw, but there are some pictures all on the internet of him in some you know, um, very tiny, tiny shorts, very tight, tight, tight spandex type shorts, very embarrassing photo of him. So I don't know if she used that photo as blackmail and if it was a threat towards him because she may have some other photos of him that may be suspect looking. Or maybe they're trying to um, break the record of the grace period between a NBA player and his main jump off because, you know, the history shows nine to ten years. And when I say history, I'm thinking about, you know, Evelyn's relationship with Antoine. She was engaged to him for like ten years. Imani was, was engaged to Bleep for nine to ten years. And here she is. She's been with him for ten years or almost ten years, something like that. And she's getting... Um, they're engaged. So maybe they're trying to break a record that's known in the NBA, the grace period that an NBA player is with a jump off. Now, as far as Laura, she really need to go ahead and scrape off her face and start from scratch because she looked like a man. Um, she looked like a salsa instructor named Ricardo. She has this, the rock eyebrow action going on. Um, you know, she just really looked like a dude. So she really needs to go ahead and have a seat somewhere. Um, as far as Gloria, her sister, um, Gloria went to Matt's basketball camp. Now, correct me if I'm wrong because I'm not really into the basketball thing. I'm really into football. But I did do some Google research and I was not able to find a site um, that was selling a Matt Barnes jersey. Now, I did see a website, no, no, I did see something on eBay. A person was selling a photo that was supposedly autographed by Matt Barnes, and they were selling it for $15 and some change, or best offer. So that speaks volumes on his skills as an athlete. And I also saw on another site where they was just basically talking about his points and all that. He's very much below average. I don't think he's on a chart, you know, whether he's good 
grade or excellent. You know, I think he's like in a negative range. So maybe he's just an accessory, an extra player on the team. So I don't know. But anyways, she was standing there talking to the kids and telling the kids that she used to play basketball. And she was telling the kids, don't let anyone tell them they can't do anything and all that type of stuff. And then she asked the kids if they had any questions. Now, if I was one of those kids, I would have raised my hand and I would have asked her, you know, you know, are you a basketball player now? And of course, she would say no. And then I would ask her, what are you doing with your life now? And she would have no choice. She would be caught off guard and she would just have to simply reply by saying that she's a baby's mother and she desperately wants to get married to a guy that's whooping her ass but he does not want to marry her and he's cheating on her so within this episode she and matt had the kids baptized and i just believe personally she is doing any and everything within her power to throw hints at matt regarding marriage when we all know he does not want to marry her so I personally believe that this is the closest that she and Matt will get to a church with a pastor, with her father and mother present, as well as her kids and the ceremony. That's the closest she will come to a ceremony within a church with Matt. He will not marry her. And she just really made herself look and sound like a fool when she said that she knew that Matt was thinking about let's get married right now. He does not want to marry Gloria whatsoever. So while she was there baptizing the kids, I believe that she should have had Matt baptized as well because he looked like a wicked evil brum. And it's no secret that he has these domestic violence demons trapped within his soul and he needs to get that released without, uh, within his soul. So basically that's all that happened. Um, Drea's mother and son came into town and it seems like they're very, very close, you know, her and her mom and her son. And she wants her mom and son to move uh, to LA where she is so they can have a better life. And she says that she take care of her mom very well. And just, you know, to be in a concise, you know, to put in a concise way, I just would have to describe Drea's mom as a ghetto version of Stephanie Forrester from The Bold and the Beautiful. That's just what her mom looked like to me. But um, Malaysia, she talked to um, her jewelry designer and it just seemed like she has no control over the design of, you know, her jewelry line. It just seemed like she's just funding the jewelry designer's idea for the pieces within her line. That's just what it seemed like to me. You know, she was just agreeing with everything. She didn't put her input in and all that type of stuff. But basically, um, you know, at the jewelry launch, you know, of course, like I said, Jackie was there with her whole outfit, you know. Um, and she was just starting war between um, Laura and Imani as well. And as I stated before, Imani is an aspiring social worker. She revealed that she was pissed off because Laura, you know, moved her junk into her garage and she helped her kids get into school and she was there for Laura helped her out so much in the short period of time that she knew her. So, you know, um, you know, Imani, you know, she really need to go ahead and have a seat too, because she looks like a precious moment porcelain doll, uh, with that tacky wig, with that fuzz and, you know, always crying every five minutes of not having someone to like her and love her and all that type of stuff. But everyone on this show has some major issues. At first they were picking on Drea, but now Jackie is just picking on Laura. So, um, the scenes for the next episode, you know, we see that glass of skim milk she called her husband, Doug, looking shocked. He looked like he's afraid for his life as she was talking. He's just looking at her like she is crazy. Maybe he needs to go ahead and have her meet with someone at Social Security so she can get a check on the first, the second, the third, all the way up to the 30th or the 31st, depending on the month of each month. So, I mean, she is crazy. So, basically, guys, that is my review. I hope I didn't forget anything. Um, but until the next review, bye.